while, while we continue preparing for worship, um, I invite you to, um, to experience worship at the 2019 Youth Triennium by, during our prelude time, experiencing it here on the screen. So imagine sitting in Elliott Hall of Music of Purdue University in the midst of 5,000 teenagers uh, singing their praise for God. Hallelujah. Um, it's an amazing world out there. 
um, an amazing one in here, and it was an amazing week. For those who don't know, uh, we spent a week at the 2019 uh, Presbyterian Youth Triennium, a project uh, started long ago for our youth and our Presbyterian Church. They gather every three years at Purdue University and spend the week trying to figure out their faith together. Um, and it is amazing and humbling as you can hear these kids sing the faith lovingly and joyfully and uh, full of all of their hope and their joy. Surprise, Darby, your big brother came. Um, so uh, thank you, everybody, uh, for all that you did to make that possible. You're going to hear more from those of us who went on the Youth Triennium later in worship, uh, but we are here to share our faith with you and to say thank you. A um, couple of things in your bulletin to take note of. Uh, there remains the announcement about our hope to help with asylum-seeking migrants. Uh, as we gathered back this morning, people came to me right away to ask me, okay, when are we hosting again? Uh, my only response right now is, I don't know. I've been gone for a week. Give me a break, okay? <laughs> um, but the real answer is, we don't know yet. Uh, we've been working with Casa Salitas, which is a wonderful program that has been helping asylum-seeking immigrants along the way. Uh, for those of you uh, who live here, you know they have been using the monastery, which now closes to them uh, for the use because the developer needs to move on in the project uh, that he has. And there have been ups and downs over this last week about where they'll be able to have their central housing project for that. Um, and so, honestly, we, we just don't know. We don't know where our country is in allowing folks to seek asylum. So there's just lots of questions. We are on hold. Um, I do know that once we find out what all is happening, we will let you know. Uh, there may be ways for those of you who are interested in this ministry to go down to the monastery uh, as they finish this last week of their work there at the monastery, and they have to move out all of the supplies that they've been storing there to another place, they're going to need help with that. Um, and that's part of helping these asylum-seeking migrant immigrants uh, into our country. And so there are lots of ways you can be involved. We'll just do our best to let you know. God bless your generosity in this. Uh, thank you for keeping asking, and we'll let you know as soon as we know. Um, I think that's it. Let's get ourselves ready for worship. I invite you to take, oh, no, 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 there's one more. I want to thank Richard Katz for being here, who's moving over to the piano keyboard. He is our guest musician today, and he is awesome. Uh, let's welcome Richard this morning. Every once in a while, Richard gets to come and play keyboards for our 8.30 service, and we twisted his arm to stay all morning long. Uh, to be with us at the keyboards this morning to lead us. Let's take this opening moment to each of us taking a moment to be in prayer our own, to center ourselves as we come into this place of worship that we might be more attentive to God's presence. Let's each pray. Amen. The center of the room is the light of the Christ candle. Let's go a little more volume on me, will you? It, it always amazes me how in this world people are drawn to light. In the midst of the darkness, we crave it, right? So we have alarm clocks that have little bits of light to them so that we're not in the dark, totally. We're drawn to the light this last week, we bathed in the light. And as we come here for worship, we recognize that God in Jesus Christ is the light of the world. No wonder we're drawn to the light. It's here that we come to meet again our Creator, our Redeemer, our Sustainer, the God of all life, our God, your God, my God, who loves us deeply and has opened God's heart to us that we might learn how to open ours to God and to each other. So we come this morning to worship God, 
We're going to do a little more triennium style. The opening hymn, you can remain seated. You can use your bodies. You can use the pews in front of you. One of the things we learned uh, from one of the first preachers of the event was that young people actually do know the old traditional hymns. Um, and how surprising is that? Um, and they cherish them as we do. Uh, but they love them even more when you add a little rhythm to them and change them up a little bit. And she was brilliant. She took the song, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing, and made it like this huge new anthem. Now you need to know, uh, to really understand this song, that an Ebenezer is something that's really important. In the Old Testament time of Samuel, uh, the people of God had wandered from God. They, their lives were full of sin. They were incorporating other uh, fake religions into their own. They were turning away from God. God was not happy. Remember the cycle? People are faithful until they're... And boy, were they not. Okay? Got themselves into trouble, repented, and turned back to God. That's this time period. So Samuel helps to lead the people back to God. They repent of their sin... They turn back to God, they begin to praise God, and then all of a sudden, when they thought things were going well, in come the Philistines. Ooh, those Philistines were nasty, strong people who were really good fighters. And the Israelites had to go into battle against the Philistines, and they were scared to do so. But it comes at a point where they had turned their lives back to God, and they were being faithful to God. And so as they go out to battle in this moment, God starts clapping with thunder, loud thunder, so loud that the Philistines are scared to death and start running in fear. And the Israelites win the battle easily. Well, in fact, God wins the battle for them. And in the midst of where they were battling, Samuel builds a monument, a rock, a rock of hope, an Ebenezer that he raised to God to give God thanks for forgiving them, for saving them, and getting them back on track with God. We gather this morning around that fount and we will raise our own Ebenezer, our rock of hope and gratitude to God for what God has done for us who have sometimes gone astray and yet been forgiven by God. So we're going to do it rhythmically. I'm going to sing the first verse for you, then you're going to join in the second and third verse. Use whatever's around you, because our preacher reminded us that God has given us instruments to sing God's praise. And most of the time we rely on electronic instruments to do that. But this is your instrument. Okay, this is my instrument. That is yours. So use it. Now, you need to know, I am totally rhythmically challenged. So my friends have come today to keep rhythm for us. So get us in rhythm, will you? Use your legs, use your pew, whatever. Follow the rhythm. Come, thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount, I'm fixed upon it, mount of God's unchanging love. Now you're going to add your voice to your rhythm. If you're like me, you may have to rely on them, but that's okay. Let's keep singing. For I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I'm come. And I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. 
Jesus sought me when a stranger wandering from the fold of God. He to rescue me from danger interposed his precious blood. Now you're going to sing it to God. Sing it to God. To grace I great a debtor daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now like a fetter bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Now you're welcome to keep the rhythm going. Let's just quiet it down and let's pray. Great and mighty God, we come to you. For you are the fount of every blessing, and it is you who gives us the grace of life. We come this morning to raise our Ebenezer to you, to give you thanks for what you have done for us. We know we have turned away from you. We know the sin of our lives, but we also know the grace of yours. And the forgiveness that you show us in Jesus the Christ, our Lord and our Savior, in whose name we come before you humbly and gratefully. Work away within us through your Holy Spirit, for we are prone to wander. But you are prone to draw us home to you. Here we are. Here's our heart. Take and seal it so that we'll be ready for your courts above by living the life you want us to live here on earth. Thank you for the grace you give us. Lord, we are yours. Here's our heart. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor Daily I'm constrained to be. Let that grace now, like a fetter, find a wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Here's my heart, O oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Amen. Amen. Thank you. These young people would not have had this experience this last week were it not for you. Each participant, it costs about $1,300 to get them from Tucson back to West Lafayette, Indiana to Purdue for the week. And our families are financially challenged. That's a lot for them to be able to do. And you all came through with incredible generosity to help these young people and their families have this experience. And I am deeply, deeply grateful. This is just a part of what we do with the monies you share, and soon you will hear how it has changed their lives and what a worthy investment it is into the ministry and mission of this church. And I thank you. So during this time of offering, sign in on those red guest books that are somewhere in your pews, pass them back and forth, and be at the part of the offering in whatever ways are right for you. We're going to pray and bless our offering even now. Let's pray. Gracious and holy God, thank you for all that you are and for the blessings that you give to us. May these gifts of money now be a blessing to you through this church. Guide us in the faithful use so that we can help those who wander find their way back to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
from this congregation, you sent 11 teens, and along with me, um, along with uh, 17 other teenagers from uh, five other churches here in southern Arizona and three other adults to work together um, as the Presbytery de Cristo delegation to the Youth Triennium. Each of them are going to come share a bit of the story of their week uh, as they thank you for what you've done for them. But in addition to that, uh, three women from our congregation went as small group leaders to lead delegations in there. Uh, what happens is, uh, at one point during the day, each of our teens is assigned to a small group where they meet people from around the country and throughout the world. And then one other time during the day, we're together as our own delegation small group. So you have those opportunities to kind of hunker down, talk about what the preacher's talking about, learn some more things, and do those things. So uh, let me introduce to you Beth Cullop and Laura Check. if both of you would come on up. Uh, they're going to share with you a little bit of what it was like to be a small group leader. morning. Um, so uh, when I heard about it, I, I've never attended Trinity myself. Um, I wasn't quite sure what it was about, but I was told it was extravagant and incredible, um, and there was 5,000 people. I thought that was just an exaggeration um, until you're actually there. And um, then I also didn't quite think about videotaping and that there was actually production people. And I knew there was a time I was crying, and I'm like, oh, I could just wipe it off as the sweat, and I'm used to the dry heat, not the humidity, until the video just now. <laughs> I'm like, nope, I'm crying. Yep, you can tell. Um, but I'm not embarrassed about it, um, because it's just, there really is no way to say how incredible it is, and to be with all the youth, and inspiring, and just rejuvenating um, as an adult, and in faith, in love, amongst everyone, it was incredible. So. Um, highly recommend it for anybody. Uh, I had, we each had two small groups uh, for three days, and it was uh, strange to see each of my groups were very different. My A group came in, were early, early <laughs> teenagers, and those that were there, they started chatting right away, and everything just clicked. It was just magical. My beat group, some showed up early, and they sat there. And I'd ask a question, and they, they just, they were more introverted than my first group. And how they got separated that way, it's just the way it is. But each of them, by the end of the week, had made the same strong connections with each other as each other group did. And I was just in awe, sitting back and watching them open up to each other, share with each other the way they don't even share. They said, I don't talk like this with my friends back home, but I'm talking like this to you and I just met you. And at the end of the week, I realized, you know, we've only had three days together and look at you, you guys are sad leaving each other. And then I thought, no, it hasn't been three days. It's been four and a half hours, an hour and a half each day. That's it. That's all they had. And they've got a friendship that's bonded forever. So being a child of the 80s, I asked, who knows the movie The Breakfast Club? And I was really excited that they did a movie about five kids that didn't have anything in common come together for detention, and by the end of the day, they're best friends. And they said to each other, come Monday morning at school, what's going to happen? Are we going to still be friends? So I asked them, come Monday morning, and you're not together, what's going to happen? And they all got really quiet because they hadn't thought about it that way. And they said, we're still friends. They exchanged their Facebook. They exchanged Instagram. They're all keeping in touch after four and a half hours. It was amazing to see. And um, I continued to see that because at our last day as we were leaving the airport, we, Beth and Aaron and I were on a different flight than the kids. We were on a flight with California, Sacramento, California kids. And they're singing a song. And I left my phone over there, so you kids are going to have to help me to make sure I got it right. Uh, a song that's still in their heads, I know it is, and found out they were singing it on their plane too. And it goes, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, then what? My lighthouse, <laughs> my lighthouse. My lighthouse. <laughs> 
It's, I will trust the promise that you carry me to shore. And Steve talked about us bathing in the light. And they learned that God is their lighthouse. And so if two planes were singing that song, leaving Indianapolis, I just started imagining all the planes leaving Indianapolis with this lighthouse light going off back home to where these kids are today. They're at home, and they're all sharing that light. And I just... It, it overwhelms me, and that's what I took from it. Um, I will share, Erin asked me to share her story, too. She knew she was where she was supposed to be. Um, she had to go to work. She was here for first service. Um, by, at one point during the day, the first day, she met a girl in her group that happened to be from Asheville, North Carolina. And since she was born in North Carolina, she always tells everybody she's from North Carolina, and she loves it. So they started chatting, and she said, oh, you're from Tucson. I'm an adult going to be a young adult volunteer, and I just got assigned to Presbytery de Cristo. I'm moving to Tucson next month. She's going to come visit with us here, so you're going to get to meet somebody. And that wouldn't have happened if Pranium hadn't happened. And then she said, yeah, I got involved because of adult volunteer where that came to our group. His name's Andy. Oh, Andy, yeah, and he went to Montlure. Well, what's his last name? Andy was Aaron and Connor's uh, not yours, it was at Montlure. It was at Montlure when they were little. So they took a picture, sent it to him, and he's like, I'm freaking out. I see my youth of my past and my youth of my present all in one place, and I'm not there. The connections these kids make last truly a lifetime, and it's amazing. And the small groups made it happen. So that's, we're proud to have been there. So thank you for letting us go. Speaking of early, how early did we get there for worship? At least an hour, hour ahead of time? Uh, the teens gather outside the door of worship an hour ahead to get the best seats. <laughs> Can you imagine that? It's pretty amazing. And they're out there singing songs and getting ready, and it was hot. Can I just tell you it was hot this last week? It was hot. Um, but we persevered. Each of the kids are going to come up and tell you a little bit about their story. Who's first? Sagan, come on. <laughs> Hi. Oh. <laughs> I'm Sagan. Um, <laughs> I don't know where to start. I'll just wing it. So... <laughs> Um, that's my picture. <laughs> um, you can't really tell what it is, but that's our, one of our worship services. And, and, um, yeah, like, I chose that because it was the small group that we had and worship were my two, fa like, was my favorite part, but I couldn't choose between the two. And I didn't have a picture of small group, so I chose church. And then um, I chose that because, um, like, they would con there's 5,000 kids there, and they could connect to each and every one of them in a few days. And I thought that was so cool because you have, like, no idea what someone is going through at home, at school, in their own personal life, like, with their physical, mental, emotional health. But with a few nights, they could connect to, like, everyone and reach to everyone, and it was so cool. And another part that I didn't speak about in the first service was a part that was really cool and touching to me because it happened in our small group. And a little background story. Um, in our small group, our leader, his name was John, but we'd call him Murph. So Murph had a service dog named Dudley, and he needed him because he had a really, really hard time with hearing. And like he, used, he ha would have to use a hearing aid, but even the hearing aid, it was really hard. And even if you're a loudspeaker, it was like a whisper to him. So it was really hard for him to hear like anyone speak. And then so um, we tried to play the song that we just sang right now, Come Thou Font, I think that's what it's called. Um, 
and he tried to play it on a speaker, but the speaker wasn't working. And like, so he had the speaker hooked up to his hearing aid, and so then we couldn't hear it that way. So he had to take his hearing aid out, which is like a huge thing for him because that means he can't hear anything. So without talking to anyone, the guy next to me started singing. So I started singing, and soon the whole room was singing. And the smile on Murph's face was like, like I'll never forget it. And he wouldn't stop talking about it throughout like all three days. And he said it was like the most empowering thing that like he's ever heard from a small group. And so yeah. So thank you for letting us go to have those experiences. Thank you. Hi, my name's Jenny. Is it loud enough? Okay. Um, I got to go three years ago, and um, I didn't get to the opportunity to come up here because I stayed in the Northeast with a family vacation. Anyways, um, I was one of those kids who didn't really want to go the first time around, but going changed my faith and helped me see that our faith unites all corners of the earth. So, so the picture that I chose was a picture of a few of us like out on like the big grass lawn, the Memorial Mall um, during recreation time. And so I was lucky enough to get to go to Triennium a second time. Although I ended up loving Triennium the first time, this time was even more special. Over the past three, year three years, I've changed a lot, which helped me connect with people more and participate in activities more. During this trip, we had the chance to participate in mission activities. This opportunity to participate in making dryer sheets for homeless people to do their laundry and to put together first aid kits and to decorate non-slip socks for people in rehab amongst thousands of others showed me the importance of helping others in need through the work of God. It showed me that we have to help those we are and aren't alike because that's what God would do. So thank you all so much for sending me not only once but twice. I'll never forget these experiences. Hi, my name's Emily, um, and I get to go twice, um, but this is my first time going, and um, that's my picture, um, and I met these guys through the trading pins that we have. We have pins that each church gets. They're, like, unique to everybody, and so these guys are from Tennessee, and um, me and Kian, we traded pins with them and we ended up becoming really good friends with them. And the one on the left, um, he's doing a project where he's trying to take a picture from every state and country that was represented. And so we were Arizona. Um, but it was like what they were saying about the small groups, it was really cool because I met this girl from Texas and it was like we were, me and her were talking because we became really good friends. And we were saying how we were connected with God. And she said, she shared her story about two different times that she was sexually assaulted. And she said that the only way that she was able to regain herself and like actually like bounce back up on her feet was because of God. And it was really, really powerful just to see how much of an impact he makes on everybody's lives. And with worship, we had an offering for, um, and the money that was collected there was going to Puerto Rico to help with rebuilding their country. We raised over $26,000 for them. And that was really empowering just to see how much of an impact all of us make on the world. And they really, they really, they took a lot of time to tell us that. And it was just really connecting to see how much, how many kids love this one guy. Um, but yeah, thank you for letting me go. I can't wait to go 
another time. Um, yeah. Hi, I'm Leslie. Um, so this is my second time going to Triennium, and I am so appreciative that I've got, had the opportunity to go, go and that I went. Um, but this week was a huge struggle for me. Um, my summer was about my faith journey, and I went from being a camp counselor for four weeks to this week, and then this was also my seventh week away from home. So my body and my mind had really been taken a toll on. Uh, all week I was trying to figure out why I was there, why this summer was about my faith journey. Why did God want me to do this? And two things really put me, or re made me realize why I was there. First is my small group. Uh, I don't even know how many of there, of, of there we were, but this morning, actually, they text, someone texted, they're like, hey, I hope everyone got home safe, or is everyone's on their way home, I had a great time, and then we just kept texting, and it was like, out of all days, we decide to text today, and I was like, okay, maybe we've made lifelong friends, um, and then I also, before we got on the bus yesterday, I saw my small group leader, and it was just awesome to be able to see her again and say hi and wish her like safe travels and have her do the same for us. And then yesterday morning was our very last worship service. And the lady, uh, the reverend who did the sermon, his name was Cece Armstrong. And she wasn't actually the person that was supposed to be our reverend that day. But... I'm glad she was, because her whole sermon was about go and be who God called you to be. She told us to go into our homes, go back to our churches, and take what we learned at Triennium and place it there. Go into our neighborhoods and do the same thing. Go, into, go to the Samaritans, the ones we believe that are the others, the ones that we see as enemies, and take what we learned at Triennium and place it there. And then she told us to go out into the world. She drew us a map, and I sadly don't have a picture of it. I wish I did. But it was this whole thing of go and be who God called you to do, be. And I felt that I did that this summer, and I want to continue to do that, whether it's Triennium, Montlure, anything. But her sermon really weighed on me because I was struggling. I had gone from the week before triennium, dealing with fourth, fifth, and sixth graders as a counselor to being with kids my age and having to realize I'm not the adult. I have to realize that. So it was just very hard. Um, she allowed me to learn things about myself in her short sermon. It was an hour and a half an hour. It wasn't very long, but it, oh, it wasn't okay. <laughs> It didn't feel long, let's say that, okay? <laughs> but she allowed me to learn things about myself that I didn't think I would realize for a long time. And I realized that ministry, youth ministry, is where I kind of want to be, whether it's just volunteering and doing it, or if I take it further and do more with it. But um, I can, honestly cannot thank this congregation enough to let me go for the second time and experience, even though I did struggle all week, experience his love and the love of our group. So thank you. Good morning. I'm Dean Frisky. Um, I'm going to switch it up from a little bit of what I said from the first service. Uh, 
I could spend an entire service talking and telling you guys about every little experience that I had that helped strengthen my faith and bring me closer to God. But in hindsight, as I'm thinking about it, it was the people that I met there. It's the people within this congregation, the, the people that we went with in our delegation that truly strengthened my faith and brought me closer to God. And the reason being is, especially from uh, like my small group, my friend Jarvis, I judged him based off of how he looked and where he was from before I even got to know him. And getting to know him, getting to talk to him, his faith was so much bigger than, than what, what I thought it was. His, I, his mindset was just in a completely separate place than where he comes from. And the stuff that he's around and the, the situations that he's been in, he loves sports, he loved everything. Me and him got along super well, and we're, we're still talking today to this morning. I'm telling him we're at service right now. And the biggest thing was, I believe, getting to talk to all these new people. And the, the first day of our small group, we kind of shared different experiences that we had had just to kind of get to know each other a little bit well. And a lot of us were like, I don't want to go into do too much detail. I don't want to say this. I don't want to say that. And our, our small group leader was like, she kind of stopped us and she stopped the conversation. She was like, take off your mask. She's like, every single one of you has a mask on right now. You guys are trying to hide something. You guys are holding back from, from this group. Take off that mask and just let it out. It's a, it's a safe place. It was a safe environment for them to say any experience that they had had, stuff that has happened in their life that maybe they struggled with. It wasn't a place to hide it. It was a place to come out and tell us and uh, share it with us. And I believe that was the most awesome part about it was because even in our delegation, I saw the people who truly took off their mask and I saw them for who they really were. And I saw them for what their personality was and how they've grown up and how they've uh, all their different things. I hung out with, you know, like Darby. She came to me the last, the last day of service on Saturday, and I was drained. I was exhausted. And she's like, you want to sit with me so we can be really hyped during the last service, and we can have all this energy? And I was like, yeah, like might as well. <laughs> like I'm exhausted, but why am I going to hold back and not give all my energy and all this time and have fun with it? And that was the whole point, was to have fun, not be stressed, and, you know, enjoy ourselves. Let Take off that mask and just share our faith and how our experiences were and I believe that's truly what brought, like, brought me closer to God and strengthened my faith. And again, this is like, like some of them are my second year going, and I couldn't thank you guys enough. It was, it's an amazing experience, and for the, the young ones in here, definitely go. It's, it's an amazing experience, and you can ask the first, the, the first timers that they thought something completely different of what Triennium was really going to be. Church, completely different than what, what they thought it was going to be. But it's an amazing trip, and I truly thank you guys. My name is Leah Haroon, and this is my first time going, but I get the opportunity to go again my senior year of high school. So this, as Dean was saying, is completely different from what I thought it would be. I mean, first of all, when I found out that the worship was two hours long, which is very long, and I thought it was going to be boring, and I might fall asleep during it, but <laughs> it was not that at all. There were energizers in the beginning of the songs that you learn the dance too and you're jumping around dancing the sermons were very engaging everyone was into it and it was the most amazing experience i've ever had in my life um so my favorite part was exchanging pins with everyone because i got to learn more about people from completely different places that have completely different backgrounds that I would think we don't really have much in common at all, but we have God and that we're Presbyterians. We already have that in common. And so we had a connection, and I'm normally a very shy person when it comes to meeting new people, but I was just running around to these people, having conversations, and in line for this concert one of the nights, Sagan and I met a friend um, and we exchanged Instagrams, and we were talking, and we're, we were going to meet up at some point, but we didn't get to. Um, but we, I really learned that I'm not alone. There might be people, there were so many people that probably felt the same way I did, but I still had so much fun, and I felt like I truly belonged there. Like, everyone was so welcoming, and... They all took me in. 
and just thank you for the experience for allowing me to have this experience and I really 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 look forward to going again Hello, uh, I'm Tommy, and with the picture behind us, is it the right here? Yeah, okay. Um, the picture behind us is um, representation of Abbey Road, very famous Beatles cover. Well, this week it was West Lafayette Road, and um, what was really cool about this trip, and especially shown in this photo, um, it was great to, in our delegations, to get closer to people, um, make better friendships, and then I also got to meet newer people, which was really cool, and I really appreciate that. It was really fun to meet new people. It's one of my favorite things to do. Um, but something that I saw when I saw this photo that I wanted to share with you guys is if you look at it, we're all stepping in different directions. We're not like the Beatles. We couldn't do it right. Um, I blame my stepping. It was pretty bad. Um, but in the back of the photo, we are all walking different, um, different paths, but we're all on the same goal or way. And that's how I felt. We had um, different beliefs and ways of putting things, but we were all going in the same direction on West Lafayette Road. And I really appreciate that. Um, it was a very fun trip. It's my one and only, but it was very memorable. And um, thank you. Hi, my name is Darby Check. And this trip, I didn't think it would, but it had a major impact on me. I was able to make so many new friends, and I was able to get closer with friends I already had. And I started to realize that that's why we do this. That's why I was there, so that God could bring us all closer together. And when you're there, when you're meeting new people, you see how fast everyone's positivity spreads. When you see someone smiling, your mood instantly changes. And during worship, these guys, they were like celebrities to us. They led all the energizers and gave us so much positive energy. Like if I was having a bad day because of the heat, the humidity, my legs were hurting, I could go on. But <laughs> when I got there, just it was so much fun fun. I really got to know myself better. I really let myself out and I just felt so comfortable and welcomed and these guys really helped because they just made me feel happy and welcomed. And I can't wait to go next time in three years and I cannot thank you guys enough for this amazing trip. So thank you. Okay, so my name's Emily, and this was my first, and it's going to be my last time going since the next time I'll be graduating. And towards like the first week before the trip happened, I was very nervous and even questioned if I should really go or not, just because I haven't been at church for a while, so I wasn't sure how it was going to, if it was going to be awkward. But by the end of the first night, we most of us just like clicked and they really made my trip better and I'm really happy that it happened and then in this picture it was we actually all met that night well the two guys at least but but like we just hung out I don't know but um yeah it was a really great experience and I'm so lucky to have been a part of it and I can't thank everyone else thank everyone enough for it Good morning, I'm Ellie, and I had the opportunity of going to Triennium for my second time this past week. The first time I went three years ago, I loved it, and somehow I loved it even more this time. This is a picture of my small group. 
My small group really helped my faith grow through seeing how our one God can lead people from all over the country and even the world. In my group, one of the girls, she lives on an island off of Alaska, and on a clear day, she can, she can see Russia. So, seeing how people from so many places can celebrate and worship the same faith was inspiring and impactful to me. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to go to Purdue this past week and change my faith forever. Without all your generosity, I would not have been able to meet so many incredible people. Because of your giving over the past years, I've gone on many youth trips, and I'm so thankful for it. And it makes me very excited to continue my faith as I go to college this next year. So thank you. Hi, I'm Kian Nordbrock, and I've been here since I was born. So I've seen every triennium since I was three, probably. I don't know how it would line up wise. But um, now this was my first and final time going, and it was an amazing experience. I made friends that I didn't know I was going to make, did stuff that I didn't know I was going to do, and it was completely different than how I would have ever pictured it. I dormed with a kid from our delegation, and I was like, oh, this is going to be awkward. I have no idea who this kid is. This is going to be weird. And then, like, the second night, we're up to, like, two just talking and having the best time of our lives. And we met people from Alaska, from Tennessee. And the final day, we waited for our friends from Alaska to walk back from worship. Well, little did I know the Triennium bathroom lines are crazy long, and we were not going to be able to walk back with them. So we met with the Energizer people and got photos with the celebrities. And then uh, after that, we got back to our dorms, and we were in a rush to get to the bus. And the Alaskans made it back. And we had final photos with them and got to talk with them. And it was just an amazing experience to find people have the same lifestyle and religion as you. And it was amazing. Thank you. Hi, I'm Steve. This is a picture of my steps. Yeah. On Tuesday, 25,000 steps. 11 miles back and forth on Purdue campus. <sighs> Can you say foot massage? Guess where I hope to go later today. Um, anyway, just to fun, just to remind you of how much walking we did. Let's go to the next slide. I, I, I'm the lucky one. In 1980, as I was graduating from high school and was 18 years old, I got to go to the very first Presbyterian Youth Triennium. I was a part of the planning team for the Grand Canyon Presbytery out of the Phoenix area. And so now, at age 57, to go as an adult and to lead other young people who are in that age bracket that I was way back then is just a huge privilege to me. Because it is the memories of that youth triennium uh, that carry me through a whole lot of things of remembering, as the kids tell you, we're not alone in this faith. This isn't just something we're playing with. This is real. And God is real. And God is working in lives all around the world. And sometimes we only think about our own churches and what's happening there. And the very short sermons that the preacher preaches here, <laughs> they're obviously not engaging enough. To know that this faith is something that we're a part of in all our lives. At all the different points of our lives. And you all have done a good thing. You have invested in the lives of these young people in ways that I know that when they're 57, they'll still remember. And they will look fondly back at this church in whatever church they will be a part of. 
And remember to do this for others. The theme this year was Here's My Heart. And we were encouraged to offer our heart to God because God has already offered God's heart to us. It always begins with God. It always ends with God. And it always begins anew with God. And so to be with these perfectly wonderful young people who are in bed by 11 every night in their own rooms... Except for Friday night. Well, okay, except for every night. <laughs> Friday night, some of them stayed up all night. Sorry, parents. Um, it's just an absolute joy. Uh, they're not perfect. Their pastor isn't either. But they're a good group of people who have learned deeply from this congregation what it means to believe in God through Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And I thank you for that. It's a huge, huge, humbling pleasure to be in the midst of teenagers who sing the faith and love God. Now, come and go. Come to God and go from God, transformed by God with God's heart so that the world can come to know and see what we've come to know in these young people today and what we've come to know in Jesus the Christ. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for shining the light of your love and grace in Jesus the Christ into our lives. Thank you for these young people who have been drawn to your light, been bathed in it, and have been transformed by it. May we who hear them be also changed so that we continue to surround ourselves by your light, come to it, and share it in ways that will draw others to you as well. Here's our heart. Thank you for giving us yours. Thank you for these experiences and all those yet to come and to be. May we take this instrument that you've given us, our very self, and use it to sing your praise. Shine, Jesus, shine even as we pray together the prayer he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's rise and sing the song that's in your bulletin. Shine, Jesus, shine. Lord, the light of your light is shining in the midst of the darkness shining jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood.
but the nations with grace and mercy send forth your word lord and let there be light lord i come to your awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance by the blood i may enter your brightness search me try me consume all my darkness shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness ever changing from glory to glory mirrored here may our lives tell your story shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine let your sun with the Father's glory, Shrey Spirit blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, let that that there be light. <laughs> Jesus freaks. <laughs> you know, a lot of us are worried about the future of the church and the future of the world. And I have no idea why. It's in good hands. It's in our hands as adults. It's already in their hands as youth. And look what they're already doing with it. Look what we're doing with it. It's never ours to keep. It's ours to give away. It's not our church. It's God's. It's not ours, our table. It's the table of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's not our word. It's God's. It's not for our glory. It's for God's. So go out there and shine. Never let it go here. Always let it go here. Here's my heart, God. Thank you for yours. Let that peace reign within us now and forevermore. Share that peace with one another before you leave the sanctuary and shine in that peace. Live in peace. Amen. <laughs>